continue with our uh, book club uh, anatomy uh, radiologic anatomy presentation uh, we'll talk about the radiologic anatomy of the abdomen part one today will be presented by dr shadan may she start okay good morning today i'll present the radiological anatomy of the abdomen we will start with the anterior abdominal wall uh, the anterior abdominal wall uh, compromised the muscle layers umbilical ligaments and uh, properitoneal fat I will discuss each of them. Uh, first, uh, I have few points about the uh, superficial fascia of the abdomen. Uh, this one, uh, the scapa fascia, uh, this is uh, located an in the lower anterior abdomen. It is uh, deep to the skin and subcutaneous fat uh, in the lower anterior abdominal wall. It extends downward to fuse with the deep fascia of the perineum, the colis fascia. This, the scapa fascia attached to the colis fascia. This is important, especially in case of a rupture anterior urethra. Uh, in this case, uh, when the contrast is extravasate into the perineum, it will extend upward into the lower abdominal wall. This is because of the attachment of the scarpa and colis fascia. Okay, the muscle layers of the abdomen, it's, uh, it has three important muscle, flat muscles, external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominis, and another recti muscle, uh, it's in either side of the midline. First, the external oblique muscle. This is the most superficial of the three abdominal flat muscles. It arises from the anterior surface of the lower ribs. This is the lower ribs. It starts from the anterior surface of the lower ribs, inserted into the linea alba. This is the linea alba, pubic crest here, and, and guinal ligament, and the iliac crest. Its fiber run inferior medially. The middle of the three abdominal flat muscles is the, is the internal oblique muscle, this one. This arises from the lumbar fascia. This is the lumbar fascia and the iliac crest and lateral two-thirds of the inguinal ligament and inserted into the linea alba and costal margin. The deepest one is the transverse abdominis muscle, the inner of the three abdominal wall muscles. This one arises from the lower ribs here the ribs interdigitating with the diaphragm, and the lumbar fascia, and the iliac crest, lateral half of the inguinal ligament, and is inserted into the linea alba. Uh, the rectus abdominis muscle, is it, uh, this is a thick ribbon of muscle on either side of the midline from the costal cartilage to the pubic crest. It has three to four intersections called tendinous intersections along its length which adhere to the anterior rectus sheath. Uh, the rectus sheath is a ponyrosis uh, formed by the three abdominal wall muscles medially. This is the abdominal wall muscles formed a ponyrosis called the rectus sheath and close the rectus muscle and attached to the linea alba. What's an aponeurosis? It's like uh, a thick layer. Thick Define la aponeurosis. It's like a thick fascia. It is a flat tendon. Flat, yes. Tendon that's flat. Okay. Okay. It encloses the rectus sheath. Uh, <coughs> the importance of this sheath it contains the superficial and su superior sorry and the inferior epigastric vessels. This is the superior epigastric artery, which is a branch of internal thoracic artery. Uh, come downward and anastomose with the inferior epigastric, which is branch of uh, external iliac. Uh, in uh, case of uh, skin puncture and uh, uh, catheter placement, we should avoid these vessels because it will be uh, best tolerated by the patient. Wait, wait. In case of what, you should avoid what? Skin, skin puncture. Okay. And you want catheter. to put a catheter for yes. the abdomen yes. or you want to incise the abdomen incision and something yes. like that. You should avoid these vessels. Why? This rectus sheath because of the well tolerated by the patient. Okay. Yes. But you, you avoid the vessels to avoid the bleeding, not to avoid tolerate, to tolerate the patient. If you puncture an artery, you have a massive bleeding. Uh, of course, like that, okay. but it's written in, in like this in the Ryan book. Uh, the umbilical ligaments of the anterior abdominal wall, uh, we have the median umbilical ligament, this in the middle line. Uh, this is a fibrous remnant of the uracus, which extends from the apex of the bladder into the umbilicus. And uh, we have two medial umbilical ligaments. Here is the medial. 
is the fibrous remnant of the obliterated umbilical arteries. And the lateral umbilical ligament, which refers to the inferior epigastric vessel and its peri peritoneum, and extend from the iliac, uh, external iliac artery into the uh, superior medial extent to the open in the posteriorly in the rectus sheath. All the ligaments uh, covered by the peritoneum. There is a layer of uh, fat called properitoneal fat, this layer, between the uh, flat abdominal muscles and the uh, peritoneum. Uh, this you can see it on the plain x-ray. The radiological features of the anterior abdominal wall on the plain film. Uh, here laterally we can see the uh, flat, uh, flat abdominal muscles and uh, it's not uh, very well shown here. There is a lucent line. Uh, this is the properitoneal line. Uh, when, this, when we see this line, uh, fat line here, uh, this indicates that there is no edema, uh, although it's not seen in 80% of the radiograph in normal individuals. Uh, this shadow represents the psoas muscle. This here, the right psoas, and this here, the, lower, uh, the left psoas uh, muscle. And uh, this is the inferior margin of the spleen, and here the uh, left kidney, and this is the ribs. Uh, and this is the gas pattern of the large bowel, here the ascending, and this is the transverse, and the splenic flexure extend upward. Okay. Uh, in case of uh, IVU, when we give contrast, sometime, uh, we see the uh, rugae of the stomach here enhanced, and we should not mistake it with the uh, adrenal mass or uh, renal mass. In case of pneumoperitoneum, uh, the free intra-abdominal gas may outline the umbilical arteries, like in this case, this umbilical arteries outlined by the gas in intraperitoneum. This is the medial umbilical ligament. Yes, medial li umbilical ligaments, and this is called the inverted V sign. And, uh, and here is the outline, the falciform ligament, called the falciform ligament sign. This falciform ligament attaches the anterior surface of the liver into the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, CT of the abdomen. In this cross section, we see the uh, muscle layers of the abdomen lie anterior laterally. This is the, uh, the outer one, external oblique, and the middle internal oblique, the inner and transverse abdominis. And here in the midline, uh, in either side of the midline, the rectus abdominis muscle, and between them the linea alba. And here is the linea semicircularis. And this is posterior abdominal uh, muscle, uh, the psoas muscle on either side of the vertebral uh, body. And uh, posterior lateral to it, the quadratus lumborum muscle, this muscle. Uh, this is the small intestine fold, uh, filled with contrast. And uh, this is the ascending column. Uh, this muscle is the back muscle, uh, the erectus spinous muscle. Another subject is the stomach. Uh, stomach is the widest part of the gut. It's J-shaped, but varies in size and shape with the volume of its content and uh, with the inspiration and expiration and if the patient is erect or supine and from person to person. Uh, its proximal part, uh, part lies posteriorly, and the distal part uh, curved anteriorly and to the right. And uh, in this picture, we see it well. This is the uh, stomach, J-shaped. This is the proximal part, lies somewhat posteriorly. And here, the distal part, anteriorly and to the right. Uh, it has two surfaces, uh, the lesser curve, curvature and the greater curvature. There is a uh, indentation on the lesser curvature called the incisiva angularis. And here the gastroesophageal junction opens into the cardia. Uh, the part above the cardia called the fundus. The part uh, between the fundus and the incisura called the uh, gastric body. The part distal to the uh, incisura called the gastric antrum. And then uh, continue as the pylorus. This indentation by the pyloric muscle and uh, the lumen of the pylorus refers to the pyloric canal. In this picture, we see the uh, muscle layers of the stomach. It has three muscles, the outer longitudinal muscle, 
this one, and the middle circular muscle, and the inner and incomplete, uh, the oblique layer, this one. Uh, the mucosa, mucosa of the uh, abdomen, of, sorry, of the stomach, uh, it has a small nodular uh, elevation called uh, uh, area gastrica, uh, and this uh, form a rugae of the abdomen, of the stomach, uh, the, uh, that one which is, which is adjacent or along the lesser curve are more par uh, parallel to the, uh, to the lesser curve, and the others are partner uh, paternless, uh, this one uh, for, uh, called the uh, uh, Meganstras or the uh, stomach street, and this will, will Megan fasten. Megganstrasse. Megan yes. Strasse in, in German means yeah, street. I, street. I can't no pronounce yeah. it well. Yes, Megan it's a German Megan. word. Big, big street. Okay, uh, it uh, fastens the uh, the uh, the food and fluid can rapidly uh, goes from the uh, st stomach uh, from the esophagus to the duodenum. Uh, and this is the rugae of the uh, stomach. The uh, the layer, the circular layer, uh, the circular uh, layer of the uh, stomach muscle uh, form here the sphincter, the pyloric sphincter, uh, and the oblique layer uh, form uh, here uh, not like a sphincter, but uh, pre prevent the reflex of the uh, food into the esophagus. Uh, it's form narrowing here. That's the esophageal junction. Yes. And this is continued the pylorus as the duodenum, the first part of the duodenum. Uh, the stomach is an intraperitoneal organ uh, is, uh, and lined uh, completely by the peritoneum. On the lesser curve, the, this part of the omentum which attaches the lesser curve to the liver called the greater omentum. And along lesser the. Lesser omentum. Uh, sorry, the lesser omentum. And the uh, other one uh, along the greater curve uh, called the greater omentum. And also the first part of the duodenum is uh, intraperitoneum. The anatomic relations of the stomach. This is the stomach. Anteriorly, the uh, upper part anteriorly lined by the left lobe of the liver. This is left lobe, uh, the left lobe of the liver, and the uh, on the left uh, by the uh, lined by the le left diaphragm, hemidiaphragm on the left. The fundus of the stomach occupies the uh, dome of the left diaphragm. The remainder of the stomach covered by the anterior abdominal wall, inferior. The posterior relations of the uh, stomach, this is the stomach here. Posteriorly, there is lesser sac, this one, and the stomach bed. The stomach bed uh, refers to the structures posterior to the lesser sac. Uh, the pancreas here, and uh, on the tail, the spleen. And behind the left kidney, also there's a left adrenal, but it's not shown here, and the aorta. And the splenic artery, also it's uh, partly uh, superior to the pancreas, and then lies behind the pancreas. Here the pancreas, and this is the lesser sac, this is the stomach. Uh, also inferior to the pancreas, there is the uh, transverse mesocolon, this lies posterior to the stomach. The arterial supply of the stomach uh, is uh, from the branch of the celiac trunk. Along the lesser curve, it's supplied by the two, bran uh, two branches, left gastric artery and right gastric artery. The left gastric artery branch of the celiac trunk and the right gastric artery, uh, it's a branch of the hepatic artery. This is the right and this is the left. The greater curve supplied by three arteries, short gastric artery, branch of the splenic artery, left gastroepiploic artery, branch of the splenic artery, and right gastroepiploic artery, branch of the uh, gastroduodenal artery, which is the branch of the common hepatic artery. So what are the branches of the celiac artery? Celiac artery celiac first, trunk, yeah. yes, celiac trunk first, the branch left gastric artery, mm -hmm. and uh, to the left it gives the splenic artery, and the right the common hepatic artery. And the common hepatic gives the gastroduodenal, and the yes, gastroduodenal and gives the right Yes, right. and then That's continue right. as the uh, hepatic proper and give the uh, left uh, yes. and the middle right br hepatic branch and yes. cystic branch. Yes. The venous drainage of the stomach is this along the uh, <coughs> arterial branch. Uh, the right gastric and left gastric, which is called also coronary vein because it uh, drains the lower part of the esophagus also, this drains to the portal. 
portal vein. This is the portal vein, and the left gastric and right gastric drain to the portal vein. The short gastric and the left gastroepiploic drains into the splenic vein. The right gastroepiploic drains to the uh, superior mesenteric vein. The splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein, these form the portal vein. The leaf drainage of the stomach also this follows the arterial pattern and uh, drain to the node around the celiac trunk and then to the sternocyte. This is the left gastric drains to the uh, celiac trunk and then to sternocyte. The short gastric and left gastroepiploic drains to the splenic uh, nodes. Uh, the right gastroepiploic and the uh, right gastric drains into the gastroduodenal and then to the celiac and the from here to the cisterna chile and continuous as thoracic duct. Uh, the radiological features of the stomach, this is the plain film of abdomen. Uh, this is erect and this one is supine. In the erect, we see air fluid level at the fundus. Uh, this is seen because the uh, body and antramal contract and uh, small amount of fluid and gas seen in the fundus as the air fluid level. But on the supine, uh, the air we see in the uh, rugae, like this here, uh, shows linear pattern. Uh, this, uh, and uh, as I said before, in case of IUVU, we can see the uh, wall of the <coughs> stomach may enhance and uh, may be mistaken with the renal mass or adrenal mass. Uh, the double contrast male of the, ex uh, of the uh, stomach, this picture, uh, we he here we see the surface anterior is the lesser, uh, lesser curvature, and this one here is the greater curvature, and here is the incisura angularis. What do you mean by double contrast? How is double air? Air, will be air. Uh, first we give uh, air and then contrast. How do you give air? Uh, we give air uh, by granule, effervescent granules. Effervescent granules should be high because so what do they do? How to give it? Swallowed by the patient. Swallowed. Uh, oh, really? uh, okay. It's like a powder, mm -hmm. and you fill the mouth, with mm -hmm. and you tell them to just swallow it immediately. Don't mm -hmm. chew it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't chew it. You don't chew it. If you chew it, it will. Okay? In the stomach, with the gastric content, it will start bubbling. To extend with gas, then he drains the barium and you do the coating of the stomach. You just turn the patient right and left, and then you have this double contrast barium and uh, yes. gas. It's not air, it's gas, yes. which is, I think it's a CO2. Mm. I'm not sure. Anyway, yes. here we see the rugae of the stomach shown, and er this area is uh, area gastrica, which is nodular thickening about two to three millimeters in the antrum and uh, the thickness of the fold about uh, three to five millimeters. Okay. And the CT of the stomach, in this cross section we see here the stomach, <coughs> posterior to it is the pancreas, and uh, the left kidney, and the adrenal, this uh, inverted Y shape, uh, left adrenal, and this is the spleen and anterior to the stomach, uh, anterior abdominal wall, and the left lobe of the liver. Okay, in ultrasound of the abdomen, uh, this is uh, limited by the presence of intraluminal gas in the stomach and the bowel, uh, but uh, if the uh, stomach is filled with the fluid, uh, we can see the layers behind it. Uh, this is the pancreas. Uh, and the aorta, IVC, and here is the superior mesenteric artery, and the uh, splenic vein. So and if you are particularly interested in the, in the pancreas or the things adjacent to it, you can ask the patient to drink large amount of water and then you do the ultrasound exam. Mm -hmm. This would, will help you to remove the gastric gas and make the image much more obvious. Yeah. Drink water on the bed immediately before exam. And if the patient is fasting, it's better. And then drink better water. for the gallbladder. Yes, and for the gases, for the, the, the gas, gas. There will be more gases if he's fasting. 
because mm. from the empty stomach, what mm. there was gas, nothing else. Okay, yes. so you make him drink water and you do the examination to see the pancreas and things like that. Okay, this is the celiac tract. Uh, we can see posterior to the stomach. Uh, this is the celiac artery and uh, to the uh, left, uh, left splenic artery and to the right, hepatic artery. Uh, this is the pyloric canal. As this uh, is very important, especially in case an infant when uh, present with a projectile vomiting. Um, Sometimes we diagnose the uh, pyloric uh, hypertrophy. Uh, we, we should measure the uh, thickness of the muscle of the pyloric and the length of the pyloric canal. Uh, the thickness of the muscle should not be greater than 3 millimeters and the length should not be greater than 14 uh, millimeters. If more than this, this uh, pyloric uh, hypertrophy, like in this case. Which this age presentation usually? Mm -hmm. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis at which age they come? So four four uh, four one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, two months, three months, how much? Four weeks, I think. It's usually six to seven weeks. Uh, yes. uh, this is the angiography of the celiac trunk. The catheter is placed in the aorta, and the contrast is seen in the celiac trunk. Uh, also, this is the first one, superior, is the left gastric artery branch, and here the splenic artery, and this is here the common hepatic artery, which gives the gastrointestinal artery and proper hepatic. Uh, the duodenum is C-shaped and extends from the pylorus to the gastrointestinal junction. Here the pylorus and to the gastrointestinal junction behind the uh, stomach. Uh, we see the pancreas on its inner uh, mar margin, and the, p uh, the first part of the duodenum here, uh, it's like the uh, stomach uh, attached to the greater and lesser uh, omentum. The remainder are retroperitoneum. Uh, the first part, uh, also called the superior part, or it measures 2 cm. Uh, 2 cm. The first part, called the duodenal bulb or cap, passes posterior superiorly from the pylorus. It's overlapped anteriorly by the liver and gallbladder and posteriorly by the common bile duct and portal vein. Here, the first part, uh, anteriorly overlapped by the liver and gallbladder and posteriorly by the common uh, bile duct and portal vein. Uh, the second part, or the descending, pra uh, descending part, it measures 8 centimeters. Uh, run in vertical orientation. On its medial surface lies the head of the pancreas. Uh, the pa uh, here, the, this is the second part. On its medial surface is the pancreas, and uh, it has opening uh, called the ampulla of water. Uh, the major pancreatic duct and the common bile duct opens to it. Here, the uh, ampulla of water uh, lies posterior medially to the uh, duodenum, and sometimes there is above uh, it. In proximal to it, about two centimeters, the minor papillae. This is the uh, opening for the accessory pancreatic duct or duct of Santorini. Uh, the uh, second part of the duodenum, anterior to it, there is the uh, transverse colon, and this divided into supracolic and infracolic parts. The supracolic part, uh, anterior to it, is the gallbladder and liver and the infracolic part uh, is anterior relation in the duodenum. The third part, uh, which uh, curves anteriorly around the uh, L3 vertebra, this L3, this is the third part of the duodenum. It's in front of the IVC and aorta. This is the third part. And uh, it's this IVC and aorta is and as its posterior relations. Uh, also, the right psoas and ureter and gonadal vessels in the posterior uh, to it. Uh, anteriorly, it's crossed by the uh, root of the mesentery and superior mesentric uh, vessel. This is the superior mesentric vessel. Okay. Yes. Uh, Sometimes, uh, this uh, vessel causes uh, compression over the third part of the duodenum. Uh, I think it's called superior uh, mesentric syndrome. Yes, superior mesentric syndrome. We will talk about it. What's the characteristic? presentation of superior mesenteric syndrome. And we, by the way, we have it a lot here, yes. uh, more I than we expect. Uh, abdominal pain and back pain? Usually you get vomiting after eating in a very, very, very thin female. Mm -hmm. yes. 
very thin skin and bone okay and everyone mistakes it for anorexia nervosa they think she's crazy and things like that and she has a experience that she vomits because the this sma huh, compress the duodenum here because she's very thin there is no fat so it will be compressed okay and when she vomits she gets thinner and she thin she vomits and we shall say yeah. so all what she needs to do is to lie forward after eating for a while so that to open this angle yani to tiftah al artery she lies forward after eating allowing food to pass through the third part of the duodenum otherwise she will need surgery to remove the duodenum yani change the position of the duodenum okay superior to the third part of the duodenum is the uh, head of the pancreas here okay. the fourth part or the ascending and measures about four centimeters <coughs> this is passed uh, up pass upward and to the left of the to the left of the left side of the aorta this aorta and pass upward and to the left of the aorta and uh, on the left sous muscle this lies on the left sous muscle but the second part lies uh, anterior to the uh, right sous muscle uh, also it lies posterior to the stomach it ri uh, rises by a peritoneal fold called the ligamentum of threads at the origin of the small bowel mesentery this is the suspensory ligament of threads it's called the uh, gastrojejunal junction and attached to the right cross of the diaphragm this is the right cross of the diaphragm uh, and this is important because uh, here the uh, Jejunum uh, from this point it starts, mm -hmm. and the uh, abnormal position of this ligament uh, causes malrotation of the uh, bowel. The arterial supply of the duodenum, uh, the first uh, two and a half centimeters of the duodenum, is supplied by the right gastric and the right gastroepiploic arteries. The superior uh, pancreatic duodenal here, the superior pancreatic duodenal, which is the branch of the hepatic, uh, ga sorry, from the gastric uh, gastrodudinal artery. Uh, this uh, uh, continues the, uh, after, th after the first part, continues to the middle of the uh, second part. And here from this point and downward, supplied by the inferior pancreatic duodenal, which is a branch of the superior mesenteric artery. This uh, inferior uh, pancreatic duodenal, and this one is superior pancreatic duodenal. Uh, so in case of uh, duodenal ulcer, uh, it is uh, uh, very difficult to control the bleeding because it comes from two, uh, from the celiac, from the gastrodudinal artery, and from the superior mesentery. The venous drainage, the first part of the duodenum drains into the prepyloric vein or vein of Mayo. This one is lies anterior to the surface of the pylorus and to the portal vein. The remainder drained corresponding to the arteries and drain into the portal and superior mesenteric vein. Here's the portal and superior mesenteric vein. The lymphatic drainage to the uh, pancreatic duodenal nodes and to the pyloric node and to, celiac, uh, to the celiac nodes. This is the pancreatic duodenal node and to the pyloric node and then to the celiac node. The radiological features of the duodenum, uh, on the barium study of the duodenum, we see the uh, duodenal cap and the parts of the duodenum, the uh, descending, transverse, and ascending. Uh, the duodenal cap uh, continues uh, with the muscles of the pyloric canal. And uh, here we see, this is the duodenal cap and uh, this, uh, the pattern of the mucos mucosal lining of the first part of the duodenum is dif different from the other parts. Longitudinal pattern of the mucosa of the first part of the duodenum formed as called the duodenal cap. Here, the duodenal cap. Uh, this is similar to the uh, pattern of the pylorus muscle. And the other part, the second and third, uh, this has uh, indentation. This we see from the muscle layer. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is called, the, I think, the pl uh, plica circularis. Plica circularis. Yes. This is the uh, fir the first part. We can. Uh, not see it well on the AP view, uh, the right uh, oblique view is um, uh, very uh, good. And this is the second part, uh, the vertical or descending, and this transverse part, the uh, third part, and here the uh, ascending part, the fourth part. 
risk uh, uh, view shows the uh, intestinal malrotation because of the abnormal lay position of the ligamentum of threads. It should lie uh, to the left and here it's to the right. Uh, angiography of the uh, vessels of the duodenum, we should uh, do the angiography for both the celiac and the superior mesenteric arteries. On ultrasound, uh, if the duodenum contains gases, uh, form this dirty shadow and the uh, posterior to it not shown well. The posterior to the duodenum is the common bile duct and portal vein. You cannot see it well here. And so that's Thank all. you very much. Thank very you. nice concise presentation and